Cleveland Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson's disciplinary hearing began Tuesday. The NFL and NFLPA appointed former U.S. District Judge Sue L. Robinson. She'll determine whether Watson violated the league's personal conduct policy and whether to impose a discipline. Watson faced 24 civil lawsuits accusing him of sexual assault and inappropriate conduct during massage sessions. He settled 20 of those suits. The NFL is pushing for an indefinite suspension of at least a year. Well, to shed some light on this hearing, we welcome in now our NFL insider, Josina Anderson. Jojo, what is the latest you're hearing surrounding Watson this, in this hearing? So we know now that the arbitration hearing that Deshaun Watson was taking place in with the hearing officer, Sue Robinson, who was jointly appointed by the NFL and NFLPA, is done for the day um, and is expected to continue tomorrow and could go on for uh, several days as uh, Ms. Robinson gets herself acquainted uh, with the situation with Deshaun Watson in person. Uh, both sides will have their opportunity uh, to present uh, their arguments and per my report at least going into the hearing officers um, meeting with Deshaun Watson today uh, the NFL at that point was expected to focus on uh, five of the women uh, involved in um, the previous 24 civil uh, lawsuits against uh, Deshaun Watson as we know 20 of those have been settled and um, and so that was their focus and we know that with regards to Deshaun Watson per what he has maintained when he's been talking about this uh, publicly and, and feeling though he has done no wrongdoing, uh, you know, my understanding is that uh, their side was going to go in there and tactically uh, argue that he should not miss any games in contrast to the league reportedly seeking an indefinite suspension with at least a year missed. So we're going to wait to see how long the punishment is for Watson officially once this hearing concludes. But as we look ahead, Josina, how does a potential suspension impact the Browns as you look ahead to the upcoming year? Well, it's just a lot to weigh. So this is why we know why we're hearing that, at least as far as the expectation, uh, the league is trying to have this wrapped up as far as uh, Sue Robinson's decision around the July 4th holiday. And if she determines that there's a violation, uh, whereby letting the commissioner have to kind of come in and either keep it the way that it is uh, as far as her decision or uh, go up or down, then Roger Goodell would have time to do that in advance of training camp so that the Browns and any other teams impacted by uh, the business of the Browns kind of have that information going into training camp because obviously they also have another quarterback on the roster in Baker Mayfield who uh, is uh, obviously impacted by what's going on relative to how the Browns view their quarterback situation. Yes, they have Jacoby Brissett. Uh, they also have Josh Dobbs, but we also know Josh Dobbs behind Jacoby has not started a game in the National Football League. So there is a lot to have to uh, figure out relative to eventually trying to move on from Baker Mayfield and getting a uh, value that they feel is commensurate with his draft position uh, in the NFL. But I do think in the process of this happening, a couple of things that I just want to highlight. One. I had reported before that both sides had tried to come together to see if they could come up with a discipline settlement and those talks uh, fell apart. And here we are having that hearing uh, with Deshaun Watson and Sue Robinson. Um, it's still possible that both sides could reach a settlement in advance of that. We'll see. I reported today that there are some feelings that the NFL uh, seeking that indefinite suspension um, is by way of potentially trying to force the settlement. That's just the feeling that's an opinion, uh, but we will see. Um, obviously, before that happens, both sides can apply pressure points with information that they can argue that can get leaked um, to try to effort the result that each side is looking for, including what a lot of people have been talking about out there, the mentioning of uh, whether the uh, NFL is justly, uh, I guess, remitting punishment equally to the owners uh, versus uh, the players. That's another argument that we expect to come out uh, with regards to um, just presenting Deshaun Watson's case as well, especially when you consider, uh, for example, Daniel Snyder um, getting a $10 million fine and day-to-day -day operations being shifted to Tanya uh, Snyder, but uh, 10 million is about 0.25% uh, of his worth 
at four billion. So there's just a lot of conversations to have. Obviously, Daniel Snyder can't play games, so you can't suspend him. This is just an example, but relative to the impact of that uh, consequence when you're talking about a player potentially missing an entire season when a season is only 17 games. I do want to get back to the Baker Mayfield point of this. You mentioned he's still on the roster, but it was on Tuesday at his youth camp. He said, quote, it's pretty obvious the mutual decision on both sides is to move on. So with Watson's future on the field really up in the air, what does the future for Mayfield look like? He said there's, you know, no sort of reconciliation unless the Browns reach out to him, but he still did echo Josina that both parties, they're moving on here in this position. Well, first of all, uh, Baker Mayfield's contract situation is not uh, in his control. He's under contract with the Cleveland Browns uh, for the fifth year option, with the, which is worth $18.858 million. So it's not his decision uh, where he goes or if he goes. What is in his control is if for some reason there is not um, a decision as to his situation by training camp he has the right, like other players, to potentially uh, hold out. Uh, and we can talk about how that would impact him relative to, um, you know, not being able to uh, play or participate and whether that's in his best interest, <laughs> um, you know, for his future. Uh, so right now, uh, the, the Browns are, I think it behooves them to figure out what the situation is with Deshaun Watson, be armed with that information, and then use that going forth. But if you are, uh, you know, with the deadline of training camp, if you're, if you're kind of pressured just by that deadline and uh, something has to get done by then, the other teams know that too, right? I think, I personally think, not a report, that the Browns have the most leverage <laughs> by actually having Baker Mayfield come to camp because it's a better poker game to show that you're willing to go forth with him as not to have teams like the Panthers and the Seahawks, for example, kind of, you know, kind of coming in on, oh, you have to get rid of them. Training camp is starting. Does that make sense? You know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we make mm -hmm. sense. There's a lot to sort through. So, Jacina, we definitely lot, appreciate yeah. the insight. I mean, we're <laughs> going to see how the repercussions kind of fall and the dominoes fall in this as we wait to hear the outcome of Deshaun Watson's hearing. Uh, Jocina, we always appreciate your insight. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we are waiting to see who will be the starting quarterback for the Browns come week one as we wait the hearing uh, of decision. They're currently having the longest week one winless streak, though, with 17. They're 0 16 and 1 in their last 17 season openers. And this year, they're opening up against Carolina. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.